You might have heard about the Rothschild family, but did you know there are some Jewish families that own America and its economy? Join us as we dive into the details of these ultra-rich people. Let's begin, shall we? Number one, Goldman Sachs family. Once New York's biggest landlord, Saul Goldman's legacy lives on. You can see it in the city's skyline, particularly over on Madison Avenue between 37th and 84th Streets large parts of which his heirs still own. Or go downtown to the courtroom and dig through thousands of pages of legal documents detailing the bitter battle between his wife, Lillian, and their four children over Saul's estate after his 1987 death. Solo Management, a portmanteau of Saul and Lillian, still doesn't have a company website featuring trophy properties as most investors use. But a bit of digging through the lawsuits detailing the family feud and hundreds of land records shows that Seoul's heirs own at least 400 New York City properties, including high-end apartments on the Upper East Side, the block of land in Midtown Manhattan that includes the Olympic Tower and the Cartier Mansion and the landmark Peninsula Hotel. Together, his four children are worth at least $12.2 billion, or $3.05 billion apiece. Their three first cousins, led by Seoul's nephew Lloyd, control their own more modest and leveraged real estate empire through BLDG management. Forbes estimates that the branch of the family is worth at least $1.5 billion. The Goldman family may be familiar to Forbes readers. Saul appeared on the first Forbes 400 list of richest Americans in 1982 with a net worth estimated at $200 million. After his death, his estranged wife Lillian, and later Lillian and her children together, appeared on the Forbes 400 list until 1996. It might be surprising to note that, despite its classification as an investment bank, Goldman Sachs generates only 30% of its profits from the investment banking sector. An astounding 70% of its revenue comes from trading activities. While Goldman Sachs may not have the sheer size of JP Morgan, it certainly commands the highest level of respect within the Wall Street community. Moreover, Goldman Sachs has a significant presence in the United States, with its main office located in New York City. The firm was founded by Marcus Goldman and Samuel Sachs, and their names have become synonymous with the company's history and legacy in the financial industry. In conclusion, Goldman Sachs, with a substantial net worth of $107 billion, holds significant influence in the investment banking and trading sectors. Its unique organizational practices and distinct culture distinguish it from other Wall Street institutions. While it may not be the largest firm in its sector in terms of size, it carries substantial weight in the financial industry and commands a great deal of respect. Number two, Pritzker family. The Pritzker family is of Jewish descent and is based in Chicago, Illinois. Their $15 billion fortune represents a great American success story, a rags to riches tale of hugely profitable deals and dedicated philanthropy. The family's fortunes began with Abram Nicholas Pritzker, who was the son of a Ukrainian Jewish immigrant who had come to Chicago in 1881 from Kiev. Abram Nicholas graduated from Harvard University with a law degree in 1920 and then went to work in his father's law firm, later known as Pritzker and Pritzker. He and his brother, Jack Nicholas Pritzker, left the firm in 1936 to try their hand at commerce, investing in real estate and small companies, particularly around the Chicago area. The family fortune quickly grew, and they managed to protect their profits from heavy taxation by putting the money into several trusts. Abram Nicholas also became a philanthropist on a large scale, helping establish the Pritzker School of Medicine at the University of Chicago and giving several million dollars annually to other causes. The Pritzker business empire continued to expand under the direction of Abram Nicholas's sons, J. Arthur, Robert Allen, and Donald Nicholas. In 1957, they bought the Hyatt House Hotel in Los Angeles and built this investment over the years into a chain of more than 150 Hyatt hotels hotels in the United States and abroad. Jay and Robert specialized in buying financially troubled companies and rejuvenating them into profit-making enterprises. By the mid-1980s, the Pritzker family owned significant real estate holdings and hundreds of companies and subsidiaries, including the Hyatt Corporation, Royal Caribbean Cruises, and Ticketmaster, sold 1993. Their largest business interest was the Marmon Group, a diversified holding company whose businesses included Wells Lamont, Gloves, TransUnion, credit reporting, and interest in construction, transportation, and water treatment. In 1979, Jay expanded the family's philanthropic work by endowing the Pritzker Architecture Prize, which includes a $100,000 award. Plus, on June 5, 2007, Chicago's Pritzker family, heirs to one of the world's great fortunes, added luster to their long record of good works by giving $30 million to the University of Chicago for biomedical research. Moreover, the J.B. and M.K. Pritzker Family Foundation is a private foundation managed by J.B. O.J. Robert Pritzker, governor of Illinois since 2019, and his wife, M.K. Mary Catherine Pritzker. 
The foundation contributes to educational institutions, especially ones attended by J.B. Pritzker, local organizations near properties owned by the couple, and left-of-center organizations, including the Center for American Progress and the New America Foundation. In 2015, the foundation gave $100 million to Northwestern University's law school, which constituted the largest single gift to a law school in the United States from a foundation. The donation supports several social justice centers at the now renamed Northwestern Pritzker School of Law, including the Center on Wrongful Convictions, the Children and Family Justice Center, the Center on International Human Rights, and the Environmental Law Center. Additionally, the gift endowed the Entrepreneurship Law Center, now renamed after J.B. Pritzker's father, Donald. Number three, Fisher Family. This is the story of a man who in 1969 opened a store selling jeans and ended up with a ready-to-wear empire spanning three 100 outlets across the globe. It's also the story of the simple son of a cabinet maker from San Francisco who accumulated a collection of international contemporary art awash with Warhols, Richters, Calders, and Kiefer's aplenty. Fisher began operating his own hotel renovation company in the 1960s. By chance, he purchased Sacramento's Capitol Park Hotel and leased some of its retail space to Levi Strauss and Coers, who then constructed a showroom. The concept for a wall of Levi's with several sizes was created by Lou Romanello, the first manager of the Levi's shop. At the time, department stores had not before implemented such a feature. After unsuccessfully trying to return a pair of Levi's jeans that did not fit, Fisher noticed that most department stores only carried a few sizes. He realized Romanello was onto something. Fisher invited Romanello to partner with him, but Romanello was loyal to Levi Strauss and turned him down. After that, Fisher and his spouse opened The Gap, a store that sold jeans in every size, taking inspiration from the Generation Gap. In addition to Levi's jeans, the store catered to the 12 to 25 year old target demographic by selling albums and cassettes. Fisher's became the first retail chain in history to utilize its shop name as the brand name when it introduced the Gap label in 1972. After experiencing great success, the Gap filed for an IPO in 1973. Subsequently, they acquired Banana Republic, a little mail order catalog company with two stores and established Old Navy, which achieved 1 billion in sales in just four years. Fisher was the company's CEO till 1995 and to 2004, its chairman of the board, and as company director and chairman emeritus until his death. An unadulterated product of Californian culture, Donald Fisher was the celebrated Gap founder and valiant savior of the Giants baseball team, who entrusted his cherished artworks to San Francisco's modern art museum, SFMOMA. On 29th April 2016, after a three-year refurbishment and enlargement, the museum was inaugurated to great fanfare with a magisterial exhibition featuring selections from the Fisher Collection, which includes 100 items. By the time of his death, he was worth $1.3 billion, according to Forbes. The second act in this great man's life begins in 1979, when he bought his first piece of contemporary art. Me and my brothers weren't around anymore, so they needed a hobby, says his son Bob, with a smile. The Fisher couple, Don did everything jointly with his wife Doris decorated the Gap offices with the contemporary works they bought, but in 1995, when their collection had reached a considerable size, they opened a large gallery at their new head office. Bob recalls, at the entrance to the Gap cafeteria, my father put a monumental Klaus Oldenburg sculpture of an apple eaten to the core. My father would repeat, we're in the creative business. Moreover, being a prominent supporter of KIPP charter schools, a nationwide network of high-achieving but low-income public charter schools that prepare students for college, Fisher was involved in several causes related to public education. He served as chairman of the Board of Trustees for the KIPP Foundation, the nonprofit organization that serves as the network's hub. Additionally, he contributed to EdVoice, a statewide alliance of California business leaders and others who promote education reform, Teach for America, and GreatSchools.net. And that's it for this video please click the like and subscribe buttons down below if you found it useful. To make sure you don't miss any uploads, tap the bell icon, share the video and comment down your thoughts. See you in the next one.